Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about two-dimensional irregular arrays. I'm going to open up my website here, javacjava.com, select the begin button, scroll all the way down, to the two-dimensional irregular array tutorial. A two-dimensional irregular array is basically an array of single-dimensional arrays of varying sizes. This tutorial will build on my two-dimensional arrays tutorial. Arrays are objects, so when you declare an array, you are creating a reference variable. After we declare the reference variable, we then assign it to an array object of specified length. This is the basic structure for a two-dimensional irregular array. You have the type, the reference variable equals, and then you'll have the new keyword, and then this type again, and then a pair of brackets. And in the pair of brackets, it'll basically be specifying how many single dimensional arrays you're going to make, right? And then in the second pair of brackets, you'll leave that blank. So in this particular example here, int number array, uh, pair of brackets, and then equals new int, and then the three inside of the first bracket, and then you leave the second bra bracket bracket blank. This will contain three unknown length element arrays. The next step is to allocate the number of elements for each single dimensional array. We will start at index zero of our first dimension and allocate the number of elements that our second single dimensional array should hold. We repeat the process for the rest of the indexes in the first array. So number array at index zero will contain, will allocate a new int single integer array, right? with four elements. Um, number array at index one will allocate a new integer array with two elements. And number array at, L at uh, index number two will allocate um, and assign a new uh, integer array with three elements. Okay, now once we have created our array object, we can then initialize its elements we can directly initialize each element like this, right? So let's initialize the first single dimensional array at index zero, which we allocated four elements there for. So the first element, first dimensional, or the, um, I'm sorry, the first dimension is our zero element there. And so we have the dimensional array of index zero, one, two, and three, we're allocating one, two, three, four correspondingly, and then we'll initialize the second single dimensional uh, array at index one, right? And that will, the first, the index zero for the single dimensional array will contain 77, and then at index number one will be 88. And then we'll initialize the third single dimensional array at index two, right? So it'll be a single dimensional array with three elements, zero is 701, index one is 702, and index two is 703. So there's also shorthand syntax that allows us to declare and initialize an array, irregular array object without using the new keyword. The values for the elements are enclosed in curly braces and separated with commas. The number of pairs of braces and the length of the array is determined by the number of values inside the braces. So here we got int number array, two pairs of braces, and then Basically, we've got like little subgroupings inside of the curly, curly braces. Sorry, I say pair of bra braces, I meant pair of brackets over here, but then we got braces over here, and some curly braces here, and some curly braces here, right? And then, so we're basically gonna have three groups of single dimension arrays, each with a different number of elements, okay? Hence the word irregular. Now this, this is how, how do we read the, the multi-dimensional regular arrays? You can read an irregular array with a standard for statement, but the only method I'm going to demonstrate today uses the nested enhanced for statement. So um, basically the enhanced for is so superior because this is all you have to do. We don't have to know how many um, a, a single dimensional arrays are located in there, are in the array, and we don't have to know the, uh, the length of each single dimensional array in the irregular array. So, Let's go ahead and come down here, highlight uh, this code here, control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to go ahead and move the browser off screen. 
I have a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one by right clicking and selecting new shortcut. Type in CMD, click next and finish. It's just that easy. Let's go and open up the command prompt. First thing we'll do is type in Java C to make sure we've got uh, the, all this stuff scrolling by. If you don't see this, if you see an error, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You wanna make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. Then I'm going to make a directory called Java. I already have it, but if you didn't, it would go ahead and create it for you. We'll change directories to the Java folder. Then I'm going to make a directory called to irregular array. And we'll change directories to the to irregular array folder. And I'm on notepad to irregular array dot Java. To irregular array.java is going to be the name of our source code file. Go ahead and hit Control V to paste in, or right click and paste, whatever your preference is. Let's save this. So basically, this is going to do everything that we just talked about. Array 1, right, doing all this stuff here, and array 2. And then I'm going to display to the console uh, reading array 1. And I'm just going to read these comments here, right? We don't need to know the array length to read an array using the enhanced for statement. Remember, there are two parts to this array. The first part uh, is an array of how many single dimensional arrays there are. The second part is the irregular single dimension arrays themselves. So we got uh, nested for loop. So in the outer loop, right, we're just basically going to be reading that first array, right? So in the array one, um, two dimensional array, we're going to be looping through that first array, so we want to create an um, integer array and just basically assign it to, and that'll be a, a integer type array to this little reference variable x, right? Now, in the inner four uh, enhanced statement there, right, um, we are going to loop through iterate through the x, this is an array here, right? And we're going to assign each element of the x array to this variable y, which is just an int type, right? And then we'll display um, y plus the space. So we'll display basically iterate through the array 1 using the enhanced 4, and then we'll, and through each um, index on the, on the first array, right? The base, base uh, all the dimensions on the first um, part of the two-dimensional array. I'll just I'll just do a print line so it kind of separate them out there so you'll see the irregular, irregular single-dimensional arrays here. Um, then I'll just repeat the process for the array two here as well after I display a reading array two to the screen. So let's go ahead and save this. CLS Java C Java. Strip off that. Let's invoke the two irregular array class, and we get reading array 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 77, 88, and 701, 702, and 703, right? Which is exactly what we loaded into array 1 up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 77, 701, 702, 703, right? So we had three single dimensional arrays, right? This is what we originally declared up here and each one of the single dimensional arrays was an irregular size. They weren't consistent. The first one had four elements, the next one had two, and the last one had three. So that's the way that works. Now, look, creating array two was much easier here, right? We just um, started off with two elements, and then we did four elements, and then we did five elements there, right? And you could see it, uh, the enhanced for loop just went right through those piece of cake. There's two, uh, two elements, four elements, five elements. So that's basically what a two-dimensional irregular array is. And as you can see, doing the, using the enhanced for uh, statement made it really, really easy to go ahead and iterate all the way through those. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and just read some final thoughts for you. So the enhanced for statement makes it super easy to read the value of an irregular array. Now, if you struggle with the understanding how how the enhanced for statement works, then you should review my tutorial on the enhanced for statement, and that'll clear things up for you. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.